Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So I got a question that was put to me on the, uh, under my comments here. So he says right here, I've highlighted in blue. Hi Steph, is it worth doing SaaS in 2026? So SaaS is short for software as, uh, as a service. So is it worth doing a SaaS product in 2026? 100%. Now, the proper question is, what kind of SaaS should you be building in 2026? That's an important issue. So the type of SaaS you should be building is a SaaS that, um, well, something that has a market, right? So how do you determine what the market is? Well, there's a few things you can do. You can dive deep into a particular niche. So, for example, accounting or bookkeeping. Perhaps you know bookkeepers. Perhaps you know accountants. And maybe you are an accountant. Maybe there's some opportunity for some piece of software, or some service that you can build for uh, accountants or bookkeepers. So that's number one. You have to understand the vertical that you're getting involved with, the vertical being uh, the accounting business or the bookkeeping business. Very important that you understand these things. If you try to build products for some profession that you're not really aware of, you're just going to get into uh, problems in the sense that you're, you're going to be building products that probably nobody needs. So that's number one. You've got to build products that people need or want. So uh, number two, you got to look at the big trends, right? So the big trend today, of course, is low-code, no-code, and AI. AI is changing the game, but there's also a bunch of opportunities with AI. There are a bunch of things that AI will allow you to do that you could not do before AI. So I think there are lots of new implementations, new use cases, as they say in the nerd world, that you can address using AI tool sets. I'm talking about chatbots, building custom agents, implementing agent flows, etc. Now, this all has to do with development, by the way, because AI development is just the next uh, type of development. So you have front end, back end, you have React developers, you have uh, small device driver developers, you've got iOS developers, Android developers, we'll call it mobile, and you got AI as well. So AI is just another tool in the bag, you can watch my previous videos, but um, you can leverage to, uh, to get ahead, that's for sure. So another thing to look at, you know, in terms of SaaS development, um, a SaaS is software as a service. So basically some sort of software, like my, my service, my software, Studio Web. If you go to studioweb.com, you can see what it is. This is a classroom management and a curriculum a, a course delivery platform that I developed from scratch with well, me and the team. And it has a whole bunch of classroom management tools behind the scenes that makes it easy for schools and teachers to manage the classrooms, does grades and tracks and does all kinds of stuff. This is a classic SaaS product, software as a service. So they pay me X amount of dollars per student to use it every year. And this has been going on for many years now. So how did I come across this? Well, fortunately, I was in a situation where I was, uh, Uncle Steph had done okay for himself. So I had money to explore different opportunities. When I developed Studio Web, there was, uh, it was the gamification uh, time in uh, software development. People were starting to gamify everything, not in software development, but in terms of learning. So I sort of jumped on that gamification trend. That was key. There was a trend. I identified the trend. Uh, I came from a family of teachers, including my father, and I said, oh, you know what? Let's build a gamified teaching platform. And uh, anyway, it, it, it took it from there. So what's the trend today? The trend is AI chatbots, AI-based services and automation. So what I did is I explored this by creating a custom GPT, my uh, AI fitness coach, which is trained on principles of my fitness program, Fit Over 50, which is a psych-first program. It's not meant to be an advertisement. The point being is that I saw a trend, and the trend was AI implementations. Now, Two ways to use AI, I talk about this all the time. You could use it to augment traditional development, which you should do. In some areas, AI will speed you up 10, 20%. In other areas, it could speed you up tenfold. 
And in other areas, it could really mess up your game. AI is far from perfect. It's far from perfect. I've been caught in doom loops, AI doom loops, where it keeps giving me wrong answers. So you got to know what you're doing with AI, but if you know what you're doing, and I've talked about this in other videos, you want to be very precise in terms of your application of AI. But that being said, oh, excuse me, uh, I won't get into that for now. Anyway, if you know how to use AI in, in terms of augmenting traditional development, it could be a game changer. The other way to use AI is to create what is called AI-first applications. This is like a custom GPT or creating agents and so forth. And this has a lot more to do with prompt engineering as opposed to traditional software engineering. So, for example, my fitness coach, the coach itself is it's all AI. But the way I deliver it, it's through web tech. So I just stuck it in my, uh, in my private forum, and the forum handles, uh, the payment, and the gateway, and all that stuff. So there's development involved. There's traditional web development involved. But the core, that core functionality, that core aspect of the program, of course, is pure AI. So what you're going to see is modern developers are going to do a mix, a little bit of this, a little bit of AI, a little bit of software, some mix here and there. And therein lies a big, big opportunity. So yeah, back to the question at hand. Hi, Steph. Is it worth doing SaaS in 2026? 100%. But look at the trends. Don't look at what the, the SaaS products that were popular five years ago, 10 years ago. Like, I would not develop a gamified learning platform now. It's been done. You got mine out there, and you got many, many others out there. If you want to deliver a course or, or, or something like that, I would just use somebody else's platform at this point in time. Remember, Uncle Steph's top three rules of development. Reuse, reuse. We'll go to the camera too. And reuse. Yeah, you don't want to write code unless you absolutely have to. Uh, let me address a final issue. People are kind of worried about um, AI. The doomers are out there. It's a big opportunity. AI is, makes tons of mistakes. AI produces what is called slop code, sloppy code. And um, yeah, so it makes lots of mistakes. It can, it, some days it does really well for you, and other days it's just horrible. At the end of the day, you still need to know what you're doing. It's like, the, um, it's like with the AI video generators or even the image generators. I found the, they're very inconsistent. Sometimes I have to prompt it like five, six, seven times, ten times to get the image, just an image, the way I want. So I think when you see the videos that are being generated by AI or the code that's being generated by AI, and the videos, certainly the videos that are being generated by AI, I think a lot of that stuff is just cherry picking. It's just, they're just showing the best results, of one out of a hundred, right? Here's the best one, you know? So anyway... This is all good to me because that means that AI is not going to be uh, destroying the entire universe. Number two, it opens, it does open up a lot of opportunity because if you can use lever if you can leverage those tools, then you're going to do well. So to summarize, if I were building a SaaS in 2026, I would look at SaaS products that would deliver some sort of agent or AI-based functionality, including traditional uh, functionality as well. That is uh, where I think the big money is going to be. And also, also, I'd be looking into particular verticals where it might be profitable. That all said, you know what? When it comes to freelance, I was just, uh, we just had a meeting this week. I still have my, uh, still, it's been five years now, I have my mentoring program. So we have bi-weekly live coaching sessions where I'm there, and we discuss the industry, and what people are doing. I answer questions. We talk about what's going on. And time and time again, not just in that group, but in that group, the jobs are, are so many jobs with WordPress development, creating custom WordPress sites, implementing. So one guy had, he's got a couple of jobs, WordPress-based jobs, where he's implementing um, a donation system where they want to leverage PayPal and Stripe to donate. And he was asking us a few questions about, you know, do, how do I do this? How would you do this with WordPress? Would you do custom? I'm using Elementor. Uh, anyway, so we give them advice on how to approach this, and that's where the jobs are. You know, it's like, 
That's one of the, you know, WordPress is one of those things where uh, it's been around forever. So many companies use WordPress, but so many developers don't want to use WordPress. So you got this 800-pound gorilla in the room, WordPress, and there's so much work to be done in WordPress because so many people don't want to work with WordPress. So if you could become a WordPress uh, development expert, uh, understand the, you know, the WordPress architecture, the plugins, the uh, themes, uh, the various uh, frameworks like Elementor that you could use, or WooCommerce, I think, is another one, and uh, understand AI's implementation within WordPress, Psh, I think you can make a lot of money there. Anyway, I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm back into the camera switching here. I got so many cameras, I figured I should start using them. Um, last bit of advice, if you're listening to, if you're older, uh, should you get into coding? Well, yeah, it's, it's another skill. You cannot lose by building skills. Um, again, I would lean towards web and AI, web and AI, uh, number one. Uh, number two, if you're younger, especially if you're older, watch your health. You know, I, I watch your health. It's, people don't talk about it enough. Uh, I'm not, you got to get healthier because, especially in the U.S., like 80% of the people who have to go to the hospital are, are, is due to something called metabolic disorder. This is broadly basic, this is basically... They eat garbage food and they eat too much and they're overweight. So if you can get yourself in shape, get your body fat percentage into the teens, uh, get rid of the unnatural foods from your diet. You know, I'm big keto adjacent person, meaning mostly meat, some vegetables, very little carbs, get the sugar out. You're going to feel much better. Your cognitive capacity will just increase like crazy. Your energy levels will increase. You won't need blue pills anymore, and uh, you'll just look much better. Uh, so yeah, if you're younger, better to get into the habits when you're younger, and that's the key to all that, by the way. That's why I put out my Fit Over 50 program, because the key to getting healthy is not so much in the exercise or the diet that's downstream. The main thing that's going to get you healthy uh, is changing your habits, so that your habits are health-oriented as opposed to unhealthy-oriented. Uh, in terms of finances, again, people ask me, everything I talk about, by the way, is from personal experience. In terms of finances, I was able to retire quite young because I became very strict with my money. I didn't fall ass-backwards into 50 million bucks, far from it, but I fell ass-backwards into very good financial habits. And the key is, uh, is to up your skills, Get rid of any debt, like credit card debt. Uh, start building up FU money uh, and then start saving long-term in broadly diversified funds. And don't let lifestyle creep destroy your life. You do that, you'd be sitting pretty, pretty quickly, in fact. All right, I hope this is useful. If you find this video useful, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you disagree with anything I talk about in this video, let me know. Uh, and whatever other comments you have, let me know. Cheers.